Hello, my colleagues and peers. In this video, we're going to continue our journey through metacognition and self-concept. We will be examining self-esteem and self-worth. And I love this quote which says, believing in yourself is the first step to success. How do we differentiate between self-esteem and self-worth? Well, self-esteem is a general term describing an individual's overall sense of personal value. Self-esteem tends to be stable and enduring. However, self-esteem can be adjusted over time uh, through uh, internal metacognitive processes. Self-esteem often involves a variety of beliefs about self, including an appraisal or evaluation of one's own appearance, beliefs, emotions, and behaviors. Uh, Self-esteem, in a short definition, just simply refers to feeling good about yourself uh, that's high self-esteem. Low self-esteem may refer to feeling bad about yourself. And certainly we recognize that self-esteem may be both positive and negative. Now self-worth, in contrast to self-esteem, speaks to your sense of value, dignity, and how deserving you think you are. What do you, what do you think your value is? How much dignity uh, should you be afforded, and how deserving do you think you are of other people's uh, appreciation and concern? Now, self-esteem and self-worth are used by many to refer to the same things. However, I, I don't really think these terms refer to the same issue. Self-esteem and self-worth are a little have, have some differences. Now, the relationship between self-esteem and self-worth is sometimes represented with the following formula. And in this formula, self-esteem plus self-confidence plus self-respect equals self-worth. Now, what I want you to see in this formula is that self-esteem becomes the pillar that affects self-confidence, that affects self-respect, which in turn impacts self-worth. Low self-esteem, probably low self-worth. High self-esteem, probably high self-worth. Now, the journey begins with building self-esteem, and four important steps follow. First of all, to, to build self-esteem, an individual needs to identify conditions negatively affecting self-esteem. There was an old show that a lot of us older folks remember called Hee Haw, and it was a of course, the, the uh, critics said it would never survive, and it went on for many years, and I think they still play in the reruns on some channels. But the guy was going to a doctor, and he said, Doctor, doctor, it hurts when I do this. And the doctor would slap him and say, don't do that. Well, you know, when you get around conditions that, that negatively affect your self-esteem, you need to identify what those conditions are so that you can avoid them and then carefully examine the thoughts associated with these conditions. Metacognition is thinking about thinking. And here what we're talking about is thinking about the thinking that is brought on by conditions which negatively affect self-esteem. And then learn to challenge incorrect or inaccurate thinking, and we will have some strategies for that in just a moment, and then selectively adjust individual thoughts and perceptions. Now, how do we best challenge incorrect or inaccurate thinking? Now, we have some strategies here. It, first of all, it can prove to be very difficult. We'll have a little discussion before we get to the strategies. But when you start challenging your thinking, any of your thinking, that is difficult. But to, to challenge incorrect or inaccurate thinking can be extremely difficult. Most people have automatic, long-standing ways of thinking about their lives and themselves. These are ingrained almost from the time that we're, we're infants and we recognize that we exist separate from the world. Then we begin to, to, to build our roles and where we fit, and, and these thinking patterns emerge and they're reinforced over time. So they're very long-standing and it is very difficult to challenge them. These long-held thoughts and beliefs can actually feel normal and factual, but many are actually just opinions or perceptions, and we will discuss this more further in just a moment. But just because you've held a thought or thought a certain way or had a particular belief for a long time about yourself doesn't mean that that belief is normal and factual. 
many times those can be opinions or perceptions which are inaccurate and need to be carefully examined and adjusted. Thought patterns certainly require careful examination. Now, these thought patterns tend to erode and lower self-esteem. So we're going to go through some of these thought patterns that can be very destructive to self-esteem. The first of these is all or nothing thinking. Uh, I, I love this one because I have kids and I have grandkids and, and I've, been, I've been married now for a little over 38 years to a wonderful lady. Uh, this all or nothing thinking, I think, started with my wife. You know, you, uh, you have full acceptance and you, and you can't question anything or you don't love them at all. And I laughed because when we were first married, uh, she had a little of that all or nothing thinking. Uh, she gets a little aggravated at one of my sons because he falls into the all or nothing thinking category with her. He gets a little aggravated at one of his children who, who does the same thing. And my little grandson wrote him a letter the other day and said, well, I guess I will just leave. You know, of course, he's, uh, he's in first grade. And I don't think he's going to get very far. When you start getting into the it's everything or nothing, full 100% acceptance or total rejection, then, then you're going down a path that will lead you to destruction. In contrast to all or nothing thinking is the ability to develop a clear perception of, of that there may be good things and there may be bad things involved. Mental filtering and distorting perceptions can be uh, very, very negative and really lower self-esteem. In other words, a uh, a person is getting all of the input from their environment and they're, they're analyzing that in their thoughts and they kick out the things that don't fit their perception of themselves. So if they have a very low self-perception and somebody uh, does something or something happens that would make them, uh, put them in a positive light, well, they just kick it out and filter it because it, it, it can't be so. And then they distort their perception. Of, of that that thought or that uh, that opinion or that circumstance that affected them. Uh, I, I laugh sometimes about uh, the old adage of is the glass half full or half empty, whether you're an optimist or a pessimist. Well, you know, some folks see a, see a glass that's 75% uh, full and they say it's a quarter empty. They just distort perception and they see everything in a negative light. And, and sometimes the events that occur to us uh, are, are around us really aren't even intended to, to affect us at all. But man, we distorted them. We know it's a conspiracy and we filter out the good and focus on the bad. Uh, here's the same idea of converting positives into negatives. Uh, we, we, we get, not only do we filter out the good, but then we take the good and we transpose it into intended negatives and uh, all or nothing thinking, mental filtering and converting positives into negatives will erode uh, and lower our self-esteem. Jump into negative conclusions. <laughs> oh my gracious, that one's and, and mistaking feelings for facts. I want you to see that a lot of what we've been talking up to this point has been about negativity, negativity, negativity. Well, if you're negative all the time, then that negativity is going to impact your self-esteem and, and it's going to uh, lower your opinion of yourself. So, you know, I guess what you need to see is a pattern here, but if I think negatively and, and I perceive and I filter and I make everything negative and then my feelings are negative and I confuse my negative feeling for being the facts, then I'm going to have a much lower self-esteem. And I think you can see the strategy emerging for avoiding this and then putting self down constantly. Now, all of us probably have looked at ourselves and sometimes and said, you dummy. But, but to continually, internally, speak to yourself in your thoughts about how sorry and worthless and undeserving and no good you are, doesn't do anything to help you. It will destroy and lower your self-esteem and put you down into the trenches. While it is often difficult to identify inaccurate thoughts, the rewards uh, of doing so are very high. Uh, consider your thoughts just a moment. 
Uh, even even your thoughts in, in a recent event and focus on that. Did, did you experience that it was all or nothing in your thoughts, even 100% acceptance or absolute rejection? Do, do you filter, did you filter out the good things and the positive things? Did you, did you distort those positive events into a negative view? Do you jump to negative conclusions before things have a chance to work out? A friend of mine told me one time, he said, there actually is enough that bad that's going to happen that we don't have to make anything up. Well, you know, I laughed about that. He also uh, one day was uh, kidding me a little bit, and I said, Floyd, and it was, he'd been gone for three or four years. He died three, a little over three years ago. I said, Floyd, you're just worthless. And he said, I am not worthless. I, I said, oh, yes, you are. And he said, no, I'm not. He said, I can always be used for a bad example. Well, actually, there were a lot of good things in his life and a lot of commendable points that he had. But, but when you start looking at yourself negatively and putting yourself down constantly with your self-talk, then what you're doing is you have thoughts that are going to erode and lower your self-esteem. Now, when you identify these and, and you see these thought patterns occurring, it is, it is very difficult to say, aha, that's an all or nothing thinking. Or aha, here I'm converting positives into negatives. Oh, I'm jumping to negative conclusions. Or I'm mistaking feelings for fact and I'm putting myself down. That is difficult to do. But if you learn to identify these thoughts, then you can approach strategies of transitioning out of them and the rewards of doing that are very high. Uh, the time comes to replace negative, inaccurate thoughts with positive, accurate thoughts. Uh, I, I, I have a few little strategies here, but just use some hopeful statements. <laughs> I love the little statement, this too shall pass. Uh, hey, you know they can kill me, but they can't eat me. And I love, as an old uh, spiritual, that I like everything's going to be all right. Uh, hopeful statements, you know, I'm going to get through this. I'm going to make it. I'm going to overcome it. It's not going to not, it's not going to stomp me underfoot. And here's a big one. And that is forgiving yourself. We blame ourselves a lot and we're going to have a bit, uh, next video we'll deal with overcoming a negative past, but, but, you know, use hopeful statements and, and forgive yourself. If you don't like yourself, then, and it's unlike anybody else is going to like you. Uh, I had a picture of a guy that said, I smiled once, didn't like it. Well, th that's indicative, and that negativity is, is very indicative of the fact that you, that you don't accept yourself or that you may harbor something ag against yourself, or you may be doing some things that are, that are very destructive and don't want to give them up. What you need to do is look at yourself. And, and, and forgive yourself. Move forward. Use hopeful statements. Forgive yourself and avoid statements of absolutes. Well, I, they, they, if they do this, then, then that means, friends, that's just not how it works. That life is very, very fluid and, and we can float on the tide and we don't have to put our feet in the ground on everything. You know, the, the old adage that, that a tree that can bend in the wind won't get blown down. And you focus on the positives. You saw in the last uh, series of events, we talked a lot about negatives. There comes a time to focus on the positives, relabel upsetting thoughts, you know. Try to shift them around and make them more positive. Encourage yourself. I can do this. I can, I can, I can, I can do this, and I can reach higher ground. And these steps will get easier with practice. Now, increased self-esteem has a cascading effect upon self-confidence. When you increase self-esteem, you increase self-confidence. When you increase self-confidence, you increase self-worth and ultimately uh, self-respect, and then you ultimately impact self-worth. These all relate. If you lower self-esteem, you lower self-confidence, you lower self-respect, and you lower self-worth. So put strategies in place to examine the thoughts that you have to see if those thoughts are, are impacting your self-esteem positively, avoid the types of thoughts that were laid out, and then transition those to a more positive approach. 
Again, I want to thank you very much for your patronage. May the odds be ever in your favor unless you and I are in the same event, and then it's every man for himself.